In this section, we will talk about aberrations. If you want to excel at designing optical systems, a solid understanding of aberration is going to be very important. As the name suggests, aberration is the deviation from ideal behavior. So far, we have used paraxial approximation in all our calculations, where we only considered the first term in the sine expansion. But for larger angles, uh, this approximation breaks down and higher order dependence needs to be considered. These higher order terms uh, introduce deviations from perfect imaging and they are known as optical aberrations. With the computational power available to us right now, we can exactly calculate uh, different lens performance metrics and no approximation is needed. But having a deep understanding of these aberrations will definitely help you identify why your imaging system is not performing as well as you expect it to and what measures you can take to correct them. You can find more about different kinds of aberration and their implementation in Optics Studio in our Optics Academy course titled Optics Review. The first aberration that we will discuss is spherical aberration. In systems with spherical aberration, rays have different on-axis focus, and this happens due to the curvature of the lens. The larger the angle between the lens surface and the rays, the larger the spherical aberration. It is a very strong function of aperture size, so lenses with low F numbers suffer from it more. To fix this aberration, you can reduce the aperture size, but that comes at the expense of reduced resolution. You can also use high index lenses or aspheric surfaces to control spherical aberration. Additional optical elements can be introduced in the system to distribute the incidence angles in order to reduce or control this spherical aberration. This is an optic studio demonstration of spherical aberration. We used an Edmund Optics planar convex lens uh, operating at a low F number. As you can see, the rays focus differently on the axis and the highest amount of ray bending is seen from the ray that strikes the lens at the highest angle. This is the outermost ray. The second aberration that we will discuss is astigmatism. This is an off-axis aberration and orthogonal axes have different focal planes. This example shows pretty nicely the effects of astigmatism. In the first image, there is no astigmatism and you can see both vertical and horizontal lines clearly. But in the second one, you cannot clearly, uh, you cannot really uh, see the horizontal lines well. This is due to astigmatism. Astigmatism occurs due to the fact that off-axis rays do not go through rotational symmetric surfaces like on-axis rays do. Cylindrical lenses can be used to correct astigmatism. You can also correct astigmatism by designing systems that are symmetric about the aperture. You can also limit the angle of incidence to correct this aberration to some extent. In this Optic Studio demonstration, we use an op Edmund Optics doublet to show the effect of astigmatism. The ray spot diagram shows an elongated focus as you go off axis, 0, 10, 15. It gets more and more elongated. This shape is seen because of different X and Y focuses of the rays. The next aberration that we will discuss is field curvature. It is a very interesting kind of aberration. It describes the magnitude uh, to which the image plane wants to be naturally curved due to the curvature in the lens design. This is the sum of the focal lengths of the lenses multiplied by their index of refraction. And when this sum is non-zero, the image plane will have a natural curved shape. 
So let's see how we can observe field curvature in Optic Studio. We are using the same example as we used for astigmatism. Astigmatism and field curvature usually present themselves together. In this ray fan, notice the slope uh, through the origin because this depends on field of view. As we go off axis from 0 to 15 degrees, the slope of the ray fan changes. This is a characteristic feature of field curvature. So how do you correct it? You can of course have a curved sensor surface to correct this, but sensors with a curved surface uh, are not very common. So what you can do is place a negative lens close to the image plane and make the rays focus on the flat image plane. These are called field flatteners. The last aberration that we will discuss is chromatic aberration. It is due to the dispersion of light. In dispersion, the refractive index depends on the wavelength of light being used. So if you look at this figure, you will see blue and red lights have different on-axis focus. This is a chromatic aberration. And a light with shorter wavelength focuses closer to the lens. There are definitely ways to correct for chromatic aberrations. You can compensate for dispersion by introducing another optical element with opposite dispersion. The chromatic aberration in singlets can be corrected by using a doublet where the additional glass component will have uh, opposite dispersion. One is crowned and another one will be flint. In this figure, as you can see, the blue and red rays have the same focus, so there's no chromatic aberration. Using doublets will, of course, increase the cost and design complexity. Uh, so what you can do instead is use monochromatic light sources, and it will allow you to keep using singlet lenses that will help you manage cost. In this Optic Studio example, we are again using an Edmund Optics planar convex lens to demonstrate chromatic aberration. We are using three different colors here, blue, green, and red, denoting different wavelengths of light. As expected, these three uh, rays have different on-axis focus, and the shortest, shortest wavelength, the, this line, focuses first.